Welcome back to the channel guys. Okay, so I finally got the ute back in my greasy paws. I can actually do some work to it now, finally. So let's give a quick update on where we're at. I put the wheels from the gazelle onto the truck so I could wheel it around again. So what I need to do now is get the wiring finished, make sure the engine starts and runs, see if the car runs and drives, put all the body panels on, put the bonnet on, get the interior sorted. There's a lot of work to do. Today I'll talk about the steering setup that I've got because I've had some questions about that. It's a power steering rack and pinion setup. Uh, I can't tell you if it's gonna work yet or not, but so far all indications are that it steers okay. Um, I don't know, it hasn't driven, but I can move it around and steer it around to put it in and out of the garage and other things like that. So it sort of works, um, but yeah, let's talk through it the rack and pinion setup, and then the power steering itself, where and how and what. So let's go have a look under here. Uh, hope the angle's all right. So it's attached by these two firm, very solid, no play brackets to the back of the Mad That fitting kit. I wonder what happened here. It looks like some grinding going on that I wasn't a part of. Surprising how they didn't powder coat it. So yeah, that's a bit of a better view. This is from the front. So the gearbox you can see just behind there, right there. That's the exhaust pipe from the engine, which I still need to wrap further. So yeah, this is a steering rack from a Nissan Pulsar N13. So if you remember those little Pulsars, let's put a picture up on the screen here. Yep, that's the one. It's a rack from there fitted just behind the mad that fitting kit fits underneath the engine nicely and in between where the gearbox is right there and the bell housing um and i think the only things that were done apart from fitting it nice and tight these parts here so the arms they were turned down at the end so that they're the right length as opposed to being, because that was, even the N13 is pretty small, it was still a bit too long. And then I believe it's running just Toyota Corolla uh, ball joints, tie rod ends. Sorry, yeah, Toyota tie rod ends, not ball joints, what the fuck am I talking about? On both sides, so they should be nice and easy to get. And the only other thing that was different, and I'm not sure how I'll be able to show this. Okay, so. Here, attached up, there's a little bracket there and it just attaches to the uh, stock Datsun 1200 steering rack. So it looks quite solid, but I guess the best part of all of this, you can see the back of the, these brackets here, they're quite tight, but I can undo them and it's got a nice um, uh, polyurethane bushing in here. I can undo them, take it out if this ever breaks or needs a rebuild. But I think the best part about it all is that this is a power steering rack. So these lines run all the way up to, and let I'll come with me, I'll show you. All the way into the back of the trailer. Unfortunately, it's not the best place to stash it. Uh, this is a Holden Astra power steering pump, or the top of it, sticking out of the rear tray because it's too tall. If this setup works, straight away that is going out. I'll cover that hole up. I'll get an aftermarket electric power steering pump because they are a bit more shapely I guess they're flatter I can probably find a small one and I can mount it somewhere hidden away because this is a little bit annoying it's out of the way I could sit literally sit underneath there but it's just the way it sits but easy to fill up that way too I suppose so I can't really complain let's just go underneath and have a look there yeah. 
Okay, so it's it's wedged up in here. I'm covering the light. Yeah, that's where it sits, just up in between or behind the driver's side wheel, next to the back of the lift spring. Just wedged up in there, just mounted up in there. So yeah, I could you could fit a flatter one just up there somewhere. Although if I just behind the diff, although if I ever do put something there, <laughs> it's probably going to be half my air conditioning setup if I ever do it. So anyway, that is essentially it. Uh, when I wire up the battery next week, I'll also wire up this power steering pump and just test if it actually works because it would be really easy. I can hype hook it up to the, the battery and just make sure it works. <laughs> So I don't know what other updates I can give at the moment. Working on the, oh, I'll quickly just talk through the, the suspension. Uh, so these are just uh, coilovers for the front that I got. Uh, there's a guy here that builds them, uh, Nick Cross. He does a pretty good job. I've got the same sort of setup in the B310 and handles really well, but it's also quite compliant and soft. It's not too hard. So uh, the handling on that is uh, pretty, pretty good considering a stock what a stock one's like so i've got to admit i'm looking forward to these i've seen other ones that don't have the the tender what are they called when there's an extra little spring there to give it a different sort of feel but they work really well so i know some people don't like that but these are what i got um and they're gonna have to stay but yeah they they feel really good in the b310 so they should be fine in this especially for the street as opposed to getting ones that's more race orientated. So these will be great for the street. The back, I've just got um, rear leaf springs and brand new uh, shocks, really simple setup. The re the reverse side leaf springs lowered a bit, but it's really not that low. I'll show you, hold on. It is a bit hard to tell with the flares and these um, wheels, but, and the angle that I've got, but they don't seem that low. So I may need to put lowering blocks in, but we'll get to that eventually. Next thing I'm gonna work on, Probably finishing that wiring up, get, getting the battery grounded, getting all the fuses in place, finishing the wire. I've done most of the wiring actually for the engine. I just need to relocate the fuse box, hook it up to the main engine or the chassis loom. Um, yeah, that all looks like a mess at the top, but it's not that bad. Trust me, this is just all the, the headlight shit. Some of that can go into bin too, but um, yeah, it's just the head, there's headlights few other bits and pieces from the the Datto from the 1200 stock 1200 um that I can probably piss off I need to look into that but that's what I'm working on now <sighs> once it's wired up I just want to get it started and then what I'll do is probably try and finish off the interior once it's started as long as the thing drives uh wire up the power steering pump make sure all the lights everything works and then I'm pr I'll probably get the body panels sorted and put them up on the front just test run it and then at that point we might actually have a rough looking runner that might be close to engineering. Anyway, we've still got a few weeks left or a couple of months left in the year. So let's see how much we can do. Most of this has been a waste because I haven't had this thing, but now I've finally got it back. Uh, I'm hoping to see some good progress made in the next couple of um, months. So stay tuned for more. See you on the next one. <laughs>